Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today I have another quick easy bread recipe for you. Today I am going to show you how to make very quick four ingredient keto flatbread. This flatbread is amazing. Not only does it require minimal ingredients, but it is done ready to eat in less than 10 minutes. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find a printable version of this recipe and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb keto recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and help support the channel. So while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Line two large baking sheets with parchment paper and set them aside for just a minute. In a large mixing bowl, combine 56 grams or around a half cup of coconut flour, 10 grams or around two teaspoons of baking powder, two grams or around a half teaspoon of xanthan gum. Now you do need the xanthan gum in here. This serves two purposes in this recipe. It's going to help make your dough flexible so that you have a softer flatbread and this is your binding agent. We're not using eggs in this recipe at all. This is a completely egg-free recipe so you have to have some other kind of alternative binding agent. If you don't have any xanthan gum or you can't find any xanthan gum anywhere, you can use gelatin powder or you can add two flax eggs. Your texture will be a little bit different, but it will still work and it will still taste good. Just don't skip this completely. You have to have a binding agent. If you want to, you can add some salt or dry seasonings or spices to give your flatbread a little bit more flavor. I'm adding a half teaspoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and dry parsley flakes. You can use whatever seasonings you want if you want any at all. Sift the dry ingredients all together until everything is fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add 123 grams or around a half cup of room temperature plain yogurt or sour cream. If you're dairy free, there's plenty of dairy free yogurts out there that you can use to make this a completely dairy free flatbread. Stir the yogurt in until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients are moist. Now this right here is going to make a firm flatbread. So if you're wanting to make something like a flatbread pizza or something that needs a more firm bread to it, this is perfect. It does have a little bit of pliability to it, but it's mostly meant for a firm flatbread. If you're wanting a more pliable flatbread, like if you're wanting to make it for a a sandwich bread or a wrap or something like that, then you need to add about a fourth cup of warm water and then stir it in and keep stirring until a soft dough forms. That's if you're wanting a more pliable flatbread. I'm just making a firm flatbread, so at this moment I'm not adding any extra water to it. Once everything is fully combined and you have your dough formed, Scrape down the sides of the bowl and push all the dough to the center of the bowl. Form the dough into a smooth ball. Then massage the dough ball in your hands for about 20 to 30 seconds. This is to make sure you have the right texture of your dough. I always tell you guys and will continue to always tell you the amount of liquid that you need in your coconut flour recipes can vary depending on the density of your coconut flour. So as you're massaging your dough, if it seems like it's not coming together well or it seems dry and flaky and it's not holding its shape, then add small amounts of warm water until everything comes together and the dough is holding its shape. For me, since I'm making a firm flatbread, this is perfect right here. I didn't need to add any water or anything. Everything's holding together nicely for me. It's perfect. So once you know that you have the right texture and your dough is all holding together well, form your dough back into a ball, 
and divide it into three equal portions. Line a clean work surface with parchment paper and press our roll your dough out to about a six to seven inch circle depending on how thick you want your flatbread. I'm using a flatbread press so I don't have to line a work surface. I just have to line my press with parchment paper. If you are rolling this out, make sure that you put a another piece of parchment paper on top of your dough before you start rolling it so that the dough doesn't stick to your rolling pin. As you're rolling or pressing this out, make sure that the dough stays nice and smooth, that the edges are nice and smooth. You don't want any cracks. If there's any cracks after it's done baking, you, want, you run the risk of having crumbly flatbread. Also, if you prefer to have your flatbread in a rectangle, like if you're wanting to make it use it for sandwiches or something like that, then just roll it into one long rectangle that's around the fourth inch thick or your desired thickness, however thick you want your flatbread. It's really up to you how thick or thin you want your flatbread. Place the shaped dough onto your prepared baking sheets. If you're wanting a firm kind of crusty flatbread, then you can brush the tops lightly with some olive oil or oil of your choice. If you want to keep your bread more of a softer bread, then you don't need to do that. Place the bread into your preheated oven and bake at 375 degrees for seven to 10 minutes or until lightly golden around the edges. Once the flatbread is done baking, remove it from the oven Allow it to cool on your pan for about three to five minutes just so you won't burn your fingers and it gives the bread a chance to firm up a little bit. After the flatbread has cooled and firmed up a little bit, remove it from your pan and transfer it to a wire rack. You can eat this immediately as a side dish or if you're wanting to have toppings on this, like say you're wanting again to make it into a pizza or something like that, you can add your toppings to it, then place it back in your oven at 325 degrees for about five to seven minutes or so, or just until your toppings are heated through. Or if you don't want to eat it immediately and you don't want to add your warm toppings or anything like that, you can let it cool completely and then add your desired filling if you're wanting to make it as a sandwich or a wrap. However you choose to use this, it's very versatile. You can use the flatbread in any recipe that you're wanting flatbread for. If you do have any leftovers, allow them to cool to room temperature and store them at room temperature for up to three days or in the refrigerator for up to one week. Or you can also wrap them and freeze them for up to three months. Eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.